Hello, this is John Boggin, your uh, friendly neighborhood professor. Um, today we're going to go over classes and objects, which are in chapter three um, of the book. If you'll notice on the website, I've uploaded the chapter three slides and also session two notes. Um, so you should be able to uh, see uh, that. We will also talk about a homework assignment as well. Um, I've noticed a lot of you are having problems with DreamSpark, so I wanted to briefly go over that. Go to DreamSpark.com. Um, you go under Academic Institutions, then go under Subscription Access, and then I want you to go into the Find Your Academic Institution box and type in Oakland, and then you should see Oakland Community College pop up. You click that, and then it changes to this little uh, uh, view right here. You click Visit the Web Store, and it'll say you're now leaving DreamSpark to continue uh, to the Cavuto web store associated with the institution's DreamSpark subscription. Please click continue. We click continue. And it takes us to on the hub. Um, by default, uh, you are not logged in, so you have to sign in. If you click sign in and you try your student.oaklandcc.edu mailing address and it doesn't work when you type in your password. You could try forget your pa forgot your password and see if that'll do anything. Um, but if not, you have to click register and then go through these steps to create an account. So I'm going to log in briefly just to show you what to do. Um, you're going to go under um, it should be one of the default things that you have available, but you go under Developer Tools and you'll definitely see Visual Studio 2012. Some of you have asked which version should you get. Um, the version I use is Professional 2012, so um, that is, that's what you want, not the Express. You want the Professional 2012. You click there, you click Add to Cart, and go through the uh, download process. Now, the other question I was receiving is that you were able to download the files, uh, file associated with uh, this download, but you weren't able to install it. Well, the easiest way is, um, if you're on any kind of even semi-modern computer, you probably have a DVD burner. So I would recommend getting a blank DVD, and you just pop that puppy into the computer, and then you right click the file that you uh, receive from this I'm sorry it's that make sure you download this one not the not the top one uh, this is the best one to do um, you should be able to right click that uh, image is what we call it and then burn it to disk once you're done burning it to disk as a disk image um, the DVD will come out or you pop it out and then pop it back in and you should be able to use it as an installation disk there are programs available that can read disk images and install directly from them that you could probably find on the web. But I would say just have a backup copy and make sure everything's kosher. Um, get the uh, DVD. Blank DVD. It's the best way to, best way to do it. So, um, that's it for DreamSpark. The next thing we're going to go over is the topics for the course today, which is object-oriented programming. Now, Object-oriented programming we kind of discussed last week. It's where we think of program units in terms of objects. So to implement objects in a programming language like C++, we make use of what are called classes. Okay, so a class and an object are not exactly the same thing. Some people use the terms interchangeably, but they're really not the same thing. A class is like a blueprint for the object. Okay, so a class, if I had a blueprint for a house, it would tell me uh, various information about the house. Perhaps it would tell me, you know, uh, how tall the house is, how many windows it has, how many doors, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms. Um, it may tell me something about the color of the house. It may, t it may tell me something about, you know, the masonry or, you know, what kind of siding it has, etc. But you don't live inside of the blueprint. You don't uh, imagine you could put it over your head and stay outside in the rain, but that's not a good idea. Um, you don't live inside the blueprint. You live inside of the instance created from that blueprint. So the blueprint is the class is like the blueprint, and an object 
is an instance or an actual uh, realization of that class. We will discuss this in more detail, and I'll show you exactly how it works in just a minute. Uh, but for right now, just realize a class is like a blueprint, and an object is like something created from that blueprint. So, I also want you to know, at least at a high level, the three pillars of object-oriented programming. These pillars are encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism. Polymorphism, okay? So encapsulation is the one we'll describe in more detail today, and we'll discuss inheritance and polymorphism in later sessions. Uh, we probably won't get deep into polymorphism uh, even in this entire class, but we'll see what happens. Um, encapsulation is basically what it sounds like. You're encapsulating uh, data and behaviors inside of a class. So each uh, class will have different data and behaviors associated with it. Um, the data uh, associated with the class are the attributes or generally nouns associated with the class. For example, if I had a dog class, I might want to know the breed, the name, and the weight. Um, that's not behavior that the dog has, that's uh, attributes or data about the dog. So those are the, um, uh, that's the, uh, the attributes of the dog or the characteristics of the dog. Then you have behavior associated with the dog. So you might have it bark, you might have it tell you its name, or you might set its name, tell it its name, tell it its weight, and then it, t it can tell you its weight later. You can tell it what breed it is, and it can tell you what breed it is later. Now, that may not be realistic as far as actual dogs are concerned in real life, but Notice that the data and the behaviors are uh, self-contained in a single instance of that object. So that means that um, it is encapsulated. Uh, besides actually self-containing that, uh, the data and the behavior, the behaviors using encapsulation, the other advantage we have is called information hiding. Now what this comes down to is that when we're implementing software and we're going to be interacting with objects, we, we don't want to know, uh, kind of like we covered last week with the microwave example, um, we don't want to have to have a degree in physics in order to use a microwave. We don't want to know all the grimy little details. So it basically, we tell the dog, bark, and it barks. We tell the dog, give me your name, and it gives me the name. We don't need to know the details behind how it does it, just that it does, Okay, when we call a specific method. Okay, so the best way to learn is to just uh, dive in. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, I've got Visual Studio 2012 right now, and I've made a, um, a skeleton class here. I've named it main.cpp. Again, same thing in Visual Studio 2012. If you need to create a new project, you go to File, New, Project, and then you're going to verify you're under Visual C++. Go to console application and verify you know where the location is you're saving it. Save it as something that means it's meaningful. Um, and then you should, you have to go under the, um, uh, go through the steps, uh, the application settings we discussed last week and check empty project. So, um, this is a skeleton, a skeleton uh, source file that we have here. And Classes in C++ are a little bit different than what we experience in other programming languages. So if you're coming from a, a um, different programming language like C Sharp or Java, uh, you know that the, um, at least in Java specifically, the name of the file has to match uh, the name of the class. So if you had a dog class, you have to have it inside of a file called dog.java. Um, in C++, this isn't so. You don't have to, although it's encouraged, we will look at this in a minute, you don't have to write the classes inside of um, files with the same name. So what we're going to do is we're going to first start creating our class inside the same file as main. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, create our class dog, and I'm going to uh, notice do a closed curly brace at the end, but then I also put a semicolon. That's another difference between C++ and other languages. If you're just starting and you don't know anything about programming, then this is all new to you anyway. But you start with the keyword class, then the name of the class, dog in this case, an open curly brace. You're going to put everything in between these curly braces, closed curly brace, sort of like you have down with main. But also, you have to put a, a, a semicolon at the end. Uh, the other thing that's different from C++ than, uh, than with Java 
is we do have access specifiers, public and private. Now, if you don't know programming, you won't know what that means anyway. But for right now, we can think of public, the public access specifiers as indicating that the outside world can access, access uh, data and behavior that we specify as public. Now, private, nothing can touch it except stuff inside of our class. That's part of information hiding as well. But in C++, we have sections, public section and private section. You don't put the keyword public in front of each method that you're defining or each data you want to be public, and you don't put private in front of each data or uh, method either. You just have blocks of code, sections of code. So anything that happens between this public and the uh, beginning of the P and private, anything that's in here is going to be public. Anything that happens after until the end of the class is going to be private, unless we um, define another access specifier after one of them. You can have multiple sections, but it's generally frowned upon. So, let's think about what we want to have with our doc. Well, I want to have weight, so I'm just going to use an integer to represent the weight of our doc. And that's fine because that's a built-in data type. However, if I want to represent the breed and the name of the dog, those are strings. I had to include the string library up here in order to use strings. These are not built-in data type. The string is actually a class um, that some other uh, programmer uh, developed for us, or programmers developed for us to use. A string represents a string of characters, like a name or a paragraph or a word or what have you. So the, this is the data. When we were talking about object-oriented programming, what a class contains, uh, we were talking about the house example. We said it might have a height, number of doors, uh, color, etc. The private section of our dog, this dog class, uh, contains the weight, name, and breed of the dog. Now, this dog class is pretty much useless right now because the outside world can't even interact with it. That's because we have nothing in the public section yet. So what do we do? Um, well, we're going to create uh, what we call member functions. Now this data down here is called are called data members because or member data. Um, these data members are uh, data that the class contains. Now the member functions from another uh, programming language you might be familiar with methods. Essentially a method is a member function. So um, the uh, first we want to make setters and getters for these uh, these data members right here. We want to be able to set and get the weight, set and get the name, and set and get the breed. Um, so here's how we're going to do it. First we'll make the setters and this is data going into the object. So once this object, this dog object, is created, we have to have a way to communicate with this private data here. We have to be able to tell the dog, hey, here's your weight. Hey, here's your name. Here's your breed. Um, so we're going to use setters to do that. So um, we're going to create a setter function for the weights. We're going to call it set weight, and it takes an integer. We're just going to call w. Okay, and couple things we want to look at here is I've made this um, this member function have a void return type okay and then it has one parameter which is an integer so the general format of a a function uh, whether it's a member function or not there are functions that are not member functions which is one uh, thing that C++ has different than C sharp and Java um, but for right now, this is essentially the same as a method. It's a member function. It's internal. It's a behavior of the dog. You will have the data type, the identifier of the function, so the, the function name right here, what did we call our function, and then in parentheses you will have zero or more parameters. You can have zero parameters. You can do that. But in this case, we're sending data into the class, so we need to specify this function is going to take an integer and we're going to call it w. So what do we do? Inside the body of this function is how that where the behavior actually occurs. I want to set my internal data member weight uh, to whatever they pass in as this data uh, w as a parameter. So I'm just going to say weight which the class recognizes 
and the class has access to, even though it's private, this class can access, this class and any of its, uh, any of its functions can access weight. I'm just going to say weight equals w. Okay. The next one is set name. I'm going to call, I'm going to have a string s passed into this. And notice there are not semicolons after the uh, member function names. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to say uh, name is, well, let's make this n instead of s. Okay, n for name. I'm going to say name equals n. And that's how I set the internal data member for name. The next one is going to be set breed. I'm going to have string b. And I'm just going to set the breed to whatever they pass in. So if they set breed as um, German Shepherd, then the internal data breed will be set to German Shepherd. And that's important because then I, then any time I call the get uh, functions, which we're about to define, it, if I call um, get breed, which we're going to define, it will return the data that's stored in breed, which we have set here. So that's very useful. Now, the getters are different. These are data coming from the object. Okay, so let's say I want to know the weight of the dog. I ask the dog its weight. Now in this case, we're not sending any data into uh, the dog. We are asking the dog to give us data. So we have the return type void for the setters means that the um, these functions do not return data to the caller. They just do something. And in this case, we pass it information, it sets them. For the setters, we do need to have a return type that's not void. So we call anything that's not void or that returns data that's not void, we call it them um, value returning functions. So in this case, I'm going to have an integer get weight, and it does not take any parameters because we're not putting any data into the class. Um, it returns uh, the weight. And all we have to do is just like main has a return zero function, which basically tells the operating system, hey, everything worked, everything's fine, um, we're going to actually make use of return values. So you use the return keyword and then just type the word weight. So whatever is stored in weight, when the caller calls this get weight, um, it will return whatever the stored weight is. So here's what we're going to do with the next one. Um, we have a string returning get name. Again, we're not putting any data into the function, so we just say the return string, and we call it get name. We do not pass it a parameter, and we say, what do you think, return name. And then get read. Okay, we're going to do return read. All right, so this is basically all the functions that we need. Um, the other thing that we can have inside of this dog is very commonly used. It's called a constructor. It's a special type of function um, that is used when we um, when we create an object of this dog type. We're going to um, have some default values that we set. So here's what we do. is For a constructor, you don't have a return type, even void. You don't have void in front of it. You just this has to be the same name as the class. So you say dog, but you give it uh, parentheses. Um, and this is the default constructor. So what happens when we create a dog? If we've never called any of these functions here, what happens when we create our generic or default dog? So let's do this. Let's say we want the weight to be 100, the name to be Fido, and the uh, breed to be Beagle. All right, so these are default values. So as soon as we create a dog, it's a 100-pound dog named Fido, or Beagle named Fido. So now this doesn't really um, do much for us because this we haven't created any objects. Okay, we haven't created any objects. This is basically just what does the dog do and what data is there about the dog. So now we're going to actually create an object. So here's how we do this. There are a couple different ways to do it, but we'll only be covering one right now. Um, we're going to just type dog D, okay, and we're going to say dog dot, um, here, let's do this. We'll say see out dog's name, I'm going to say D dot get name. Notice I need to use the parentheses here. 
then I'm going to do an indel. I'm going to do another C out. I'm going to say dogs wait d dot get wait, and then the dogs agree. Okay. So what should it print out? Let's think about this. The dog's name we will call get name. Well, get name returns the data in name, but I've never called set on any of these. So what what is actually done here? So let's build and run it and see what happens. So I build it. The build starts and it tells me um, if everything goes right, it'll tell me I have a uh, successful build. So that's what I have right here. One succeeded, zero failed. That's what I expect. Um, next thing we're going to do is go to debug and then start without debugging. And you'll notice it tells me that the dog's name is Fido, dog's weight is 100, and dog's breed is Beagle. Well, that doesn't happen by magic. It's because the default constructor, as soon as I create a dog instance, this constructor is called and it sets the weight to 100, named to Fido, and breed to Beagle. Well, what if I want to change data about this dog? Well, I could say d.setName. I'm going to call it um, Bob. It's Bob the dog. Set weight um, 60 and set breed, I'm going to say German uh, Shepherd. All right. So now I'm going to copy this same code here. I'm just going to paste it down here and let's see if we get different data. Uh, just to separate these two, I'm going to put a C out statement and a couple uh, extra end lines in here just so there's more space between them so we know which one's which. So I'm going to build this and okay it tells me build failed let's see why oops okay, let's see why the build failed okay I put end here instead of end L. See? That's live television. You got to see an error in progress. So we just, I had an end instead of end L. There was no variable named to end, so it didn't know what to do with that. Okay, so build it. And the lucky thing is, I, unless they're just catastrophic and cause confusion, I'm not going to edit out any mistakes I make. So you'll be able to see mistakes in action. All right, so start without debugging. And you notice now. It sets the dog's name to Fido, the dog's weight to 100, dog's uh, breed to Beagle. That's what happens when we first um, create this dog. Then I, I printed out a couple new lines so we can separate the, the information. Then I set Bob as the name, 60 as the weight in German Shepherd as the breed. And then, not surprisingly, that's what's printed afterwards. All right. So that's basically what we have here with our, our class. Um, the... Uh, next thing I want to describe are um, what are parameters. So I'm going to use different terminology. In a function, what we have here in a function is called a formal parameter. Okay, a formal parameter. Sometimes it's just called a parameter or a formal parameter, one or the other. Now, when you actually pass it a value, such as in these examples. I'm not passing this a string name. I'm passing it the string literal Bob. I could pass it a variable. If I had a, ver a string variable and I passed it to set the name that way, I could do that. Um, but when you actually pass a value into a function, such as in these three cases, we generally do not refer to it as the parameter. We call it the argument. The argument. Um, sometimes you'll hear the term actual parameter used. Um, but usually the distinction is that inside of the definition for the function where there's just variables used, we call it the, the uh, formal parameter or parameter, and then we call the actual data put in here the argument. Okay, argument. Um, but it's just two different naming conventions just to let you know. 
Okay, so that's formal versus actual parameter. All right, so that's uh, that's fine and dandy, but um, another detail that's uh, pretty important is that uh, usually you don't define the class inside of the same file as main. Um, usually it gets its own file, okay, or multiple files in some cases. So what we're going to do here is I'm, I'm going to use a technique called uh, separate, separate compilation. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to create a header file, and we're going to rewrite this dog class. So um, we'll um, create a header file, add new item. Now for header files, I'm not going to use a CPP file. I'm going to create a .h file. Okay. Oops, I called it header.h. That's not what I want. I want to delete that. Um, I could just rename it, I suppose. Okay, so we're going to call it um, dog.h. This is dog.h. Okay, see it right there? And then we have, uh, in the source files, I'm going to create a file called uh, dog.cpp. Generally, you want to get it right this time, but sometimes you screw up. It just happens. Okay, so... Um, you have the dog, the CPP files over here, and then the H files over here. That is, I guess, one distinction between the default behavior of Visual Studio 2012 and 2010 is that um, it looks like you're putting the header files over here. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. First thing is we're going to um, very carefully grab this class here, and I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to paste it in the... Uh, dog.cpp file, okay, and we're going to fix some things here. So we're also going to um, paste it temporarily in the .h file. Okay, it looks like it's moved it there since I've got actual code in it. Um, but here's the issue. For the um, .h file, the .h file is called the specification file. It's a header file. These specification file does not have any of the implementation. It doesn't have any of the stuff um, that uh, the class uh, does. It just says what what does it do, not how it does it. So for the, for the um, specification file, um, we're going to uh, delete all the actual um, functionality that we declared here, and then we're going to fix some of the errors. And get rid of some of this, uh, this stuff here. Okay. And generally, you would start a class this way by defining its interface. Um, in other words, what what kind of functionality does it provide, rather than how it does it. Now, the other problem you'll notice is that. Um, you'll notice that the string is being highlighted because remember remember that the string is not a built-in data type. Okay, The private section is okay. Um, this is what our .h file should look like. Notice it has the name of the constructor, the name of all the, f the functions that we're providing, and the private data in the public and private section, but it does not have the implementations. So specification file, specification file. So specification file it doesn't show the implementation. Okay. Now, dog.cpp has some problems as well. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the class curly braces and all the private data members. We don't need any of that. And just as a kind of a sneaky thing, just to show you here, I'm going to grab all of these implementations right here, and I'm going to hit Shift Tab, and it's going to move them uh, back one space. And none of these are being recognized. Okay, it doesn't know where weight's coming from. It has no idea what dog is. Um, it doesn't know what any of this is. Now, in order to implement the functions declared in here, I have to include the header file. Um, in this in this implementation file. This is called the implementation file. So in this case, we're going to put it in double quotes. It's going to be called uh, dog.h. All right. So in this case, also, the problem is that it doesn't know, it still doesn't know 
um, where this data is coming from. So we've, we've included the file, and now we have to do what's called scope resolution. We have to tell it, you belong to this class. So what's the name of the class? It's dog. So in front of every one of the identifiers, we have to put dog and then two colons. That's called the scope uh, resolution operator. Okay, so I can just copy and paste them if I want to, but just to show you again, dog and then two colons. That's one thing that a lot of people forget um, when they start creating classes and they have them in separate files, so they forget to put the name of the class and the scope resolution operator. Okay, so you've got void, then the scope resolution operator, uh, dog scope resolution operator, and then the name of the file. Notice that this is no longer underlined here, neither are these. So I'm just going to copy and paste that in front of each of the identifiers, the function identifiers, and you'll notice that the uh, red lines magically disappear. So I now have the interface here separated from the implementation, so this enforces good programming, and it also makes this class reusable. I could take this class and move it to a different project and reuse it, whereas when it was in here, it was, you know, it was coupled with main. So here's another problem we have here. Um, it doesn't recognize dog, so that's because we took the class out of this file. So how do we get it to use it? Well, we just have to include the um, implementation file, or specification file right here, dog.h. Notice this is in quotes, since it's not part of the uh, standard uh, hierarchy that the solution looks through, uh, that the uh, IDE looks through. Uh, we have to put it in quotes so it knows it's within our same project. So now that disappears, and let's see if it runs. We'll build it again. We notice that it's successful. And we go to debug, start without debugging. And again, we'll see that the information's printed out just as it was before. Okay, so that's separate compilation. All right, so. Um, the next thing that I'd like to do is I would like for us to uh, do a project, uh, do a programming project from the book. So given that I provided you with this basic information here, what I want you to do is I want you to, um, I want you to go to uh, project uh, 314, or uh, exercise 314 on page 102, and I will read it to you just in case you don't have the book. Um, it says, <clears throat> Okay. All right, so let's try um, the section, or chapter 3, exercise 3.14. It's creating an employee class. Okay, so I'm going to read it to you if you don't have the book. It says, create a class called employee that includes three pieces of information as data members. A first name of type string, a last name, of type string and a monthly salary of type int. Your class should have a constructor that initializes the three data members. Provide a sit and a get a set and a get function for each data member. If the monthly salary is not positive, set it to zero. Write a test program that demonstrates class employees' capabilities. Create two employee objects and display each object's yearly salary. Uh, then give each employee a 10% raise and display each employee's yearly salary again. Okay, so here's what I'm going to recommend. I'm going to recommend that you pause the video for about uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then give this a shot on your own. And then um, we will come back and discuss it. All right. Okay, so let's get um, working on the uh, the exercise. So exercise again, three point one four. And if you hadn't already, um, you want to uh, give yourself about twenty minutes, thirty minutes, maybe to look it over and see if you can figure it out. If you need more time, that's fine. Obviously, you're not holding any of us up uh, you <laughs> since it's an online course. Um, but here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to read it again. It says uh, 3.14 on page 102 says, 
create a class called employee that indicates includes three pieces of information as data members a first name of type string a last name of type string and a monthly salary of type int um, your class should have a constructor that initializes the three data members provide a set and get function for each data member if the monthly salary is not positive set it to zero write a test program that demonstrate class demonstrates class employees capabilities create two employee objects and display each objects yearly salary then give each employee a 10 percent raise and display each employees yearly salary again now that might sound um, kind of overwhelming because there's a whole lot of stuff they're telling you to do but you just start with what you know and then build on top of it and it's not as it's not that difficult um, but once you get familiar with how to make classes it will be uh, like second nature so this is our dog class we can look at it and see kind of how we how do we build the dog.h file and how do we make the dog.cpp file so we don't want to forget uh, things like the scope resolution operator and class names um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to close this solution and start a new one. Okay, I'm going to go to File, New, Project, and I'm going to call this, um, I'm going to call it Session 2 Employee. Okay, and I'm going to make sure it's under Empty Project. Click Finish. Alright, so we have an empty project here. I'm going to create the three files that I know we're going to need. You're going to go to the header file, go to add new item. It's a header file and it's going to be named employee.h. Okay, and then click add because that's going to be the name of our class. Then source files, I'm going to create a corresponding implementation file, employee.cpp. So I have that file. So these are the two files involved with the class. But we also need another file. We're going to go to Add New Item. I'm going to call this main.cpp. I can call it driver.cpp or sausage.cpp or chocolate um, twinkie.cpp. It doesn't really matter. This is going to be the file that contains main. So I'm going to create in that file a skeleton program um, that's going to be using our, our employee class. Okay. So, first we want to define, and note you can click and drag these and move the tabs around just like you can in, say, Internet Explorer. In employee.h, I want the specifications, specification for the employee. So let's read it again. Let's look over it and see what they say. They say we need three pieces of information, um, the data member's first name, last name, and monthly salary, and then also we need the what it does. We need a constructor and a get and set for each of the data members. So, we name our class, it's employee. Okay, notice I put the semicolon at the end. I have public and private section. Again, um, the public section will contain our uh, uh, member functions, the getters and setters and the constructor, and the private section contains the data. The data that we have um, for the employee are the first name and last name and monthly salary as an integer. So in order to use strings, I have to include the string uh, library. Okay. Um, so for the private section, I'm going to put string first, string last, and int monthly salary. Okay. So, that's all the data we need. Now, to actually do the getting and setting, I have to have the employee. Now, it's said that the this constructor is going to be a little bit different. This constructor uh, this constructor um, it says if we read it, it says the class should have a constructor that initializes the three data members. Okay, so we're basically just going to set some default information. So we want the constructor, and we want it says it wants us to provide a set and a get function for each of the each of the data members. So for the first one, we're going to have a set and a get for first. So for the getters or the setters, uh, we have void 
set first, and it takes a string, okay, and then the getter, or the setter for last, set last, takes a string, and then set um, salary, call it set salary, um, it takes an integer, we'll call M, it doesn't really matter what we call it. Those are the setters. Now the getters, um, the first name will has to return a string data type, so we have to say get first. It doesn't take any additional information, so no parameters. String get last, and int get monthly salary. Okay, so I'm also going to change this to set monthly salaries, because that makes a little more sense. Because um, that's exactly what it does. Now, that's our .h file. That's all we need. Now, for the implementations for these, I'm going to go over into the employee.cpp. I'm going to say include employee.h. All right. Now, the first thing we want to define is the constructor for employee. So, again, in this file, remember I have to put the name of the class the scope resolution operator, and you'll notice IntelliSense in Visual Studio even brings up all of the members, so you could just double click it, okay, employee. And for this one, it just wants us to initialize the data member. So we have first, last, and monthly salary. So I'm going to say um, first is equal to just an empty string. I'm not going to put anything in it. Last, empty string, and then uh, salary, monthly salary, I'm going to set to zero. Okay, it's, it didn't say what to initialize them to, so we're just going to initialize them. The next thing we need to do is we need to implement the uh, set first, set last, um, set monthly salary, and then the rest of them. So let's do set first. So you put the data type first always. Now the reason we didn't put one there is why. Why didn't we put a data type in front of this one? Well, this is a constructor. It doesn't have a data type. But this, we have to put the data type for uh, set first. Okay, so data type, then the name of the class then set first, and we know that takes some sort of string, and we're going to set our internal first uh, to whatever the user passes in, okay? Then we know we have an employee again, set last, and notice how it's auto-filling, that's because I'm hitting tab every time I start uh, typing, I can just hit tab and it'll complete it when it knows which one I'm after. I can use the arrow keys or the mouse, it doesn't really matter. This one just sets the last name, and then I'm going to do set, and I'm going to use an arrow key to go down to monthly salary, and I hit tab, and it takes me over here. Okay, this one takes um, an integer, we'll say S for salary, it doesn't really matter, um, and I'm going to say uh, the monthly salary is equal to S. So those are the sets. The next thing are the gets. Okay, so we have string get first. Oops, what do we need? We need the name of the class. We're going to have get first, which returns what? This is get first, so we're returning the first name. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the last name. So return last. Okay, and then we're going to have uh, this one's the salary, so it's an int. Um, employee get monthly salary. This one's just going to return the monthly salary. Monthly salary. Okay. And then close it. Okay, so this is the implementation. That's the entire thing. That's the whole class. Um, we have the specification and the implementation. And then I have main right here. Now, in order to use it, this is our driver program. We're going to include employee.h. And I'm just going to go through one example, and I'll let you uh, do the other ex uh, stuff it says to do, give it a raise and all that other stuff. We're just going to make one object, but you can make two. Um, employee, we'll say emp1, emp1.set. Um, uh, one second. Set first to Bob, and we'll see what this is. Okay, 
Okay, I see what I did. Um, I put EMPL instead of EMP1. Okay, now it's better. Okay, that scared me for a second there. I thought something was wrong. Um, <clears throat> EMP1. Got set last. Bob Johnson. And then EMP1 dot set monthly salary. Uh, no, it's an integer, so we'll say monthly salary is 4000 Okay, so we've set the monthly salary to 4000 and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to print this data out. So I'm going to say, see out, emp1.get first. Um, just put a space in between. That's why I have just a string literal with a space. And notice I'm also separating them by these stream insertion operators. Uh, get last. Uh, actually, get first should have a uh, open and close parentheses. Um, and then we put space makes the uh, we'll just say makes, and then I'm going to say emp one dot get monthly salary per month. Okay, and then end up. All right, I'm also going to put a uh, dollar sign in front of that. Okay, so you got to look at how this is being pieced together. I'm going to get first is going to be replaced by the first name that is set internal to this object. And then the same thing with the get last, and then monthly salary and such. Okay, so I'm going to build it. Build succeeded. I'm going to um, start without debugging, and you'll notice it now says Bob Johnson makes $4,000 per month. Okay? All right, so that's pretty pretty straightforward. All right, now, um, so we've done that, and then we've done uh, in-class exercise. Um, so what I would like you guys to do now is you can um, go over, we'll go over uh, homework one. Let's go over homework one here. Homework one, okay. So homework assignment one, um, I'm going to upload. Uh, we'll do that right now, just so you can see me doing it. Okay, for Dropbox, I'm going to create a new folder, and this is going to be called um, Homework uh, no, assignment one. I'm going to create the homework category. I don't know. I might have already done that. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So new grade item homework one, and it's worth uh, 20 points. Okay. And it's out of 20. Okay, and uh, I'm going to add the file. I'm going to attach the file here so you can have access to it. Under homework. There we go. Okay, so you're going to basically complete this assignment and upload the answers in whatever format you're most comfortable with. Um, you could even put the um, answers in the comment box if you'd like, but again, this is under Dropbox, and it's under homework assignment number one. Uh, homework assignment number one is technically assigned on the 13th, even though I'm uploading the I upload the lectures early. Its technical date of assignment is the 13th, um, and the uh, due date is 5:27/2013 at 11:59 p.m. So that is um, Monday the 27th. So you have uh, almost three weeks to complete it. So hopefully you can answer these five questions, these four questions in three weeks. It's worth 20 points. Um, I may assign more homework in a couple weeks or something that might overlap with this, so I would recommend just trying to get this done. Um, these are all uh, things that you should be able to answer based on the content of the book and also the things that we went over today. In, in fact, this one I gave you a hint, the three pillars of object-oriented programming. Um, but you should be able to fill in the blank on any of these. Okay, basically as far as the uh, format of the what you turn in, you could just put the number and then the keywords that are missing, if you'd like. Okay, so it's basically five points per question. Five, ten, fifteen, and twenty. Alright, so this is due on the 27th at 11.59 p.m. Okay, so <clears throat> that's uh, another example that we did. Uh, I just wanted to make sure you had the homework uh, ready. We should do 
uh, one more example just so you're more uh, comfortable. So for this example, I'm going to have you uh, create a new project. I'm going to explain to you what I want you to do. And then I want you to pause the um, video for another you know, 20 or 30 minutes and create yet another class. So for this one, I want you to create a car class. So it's basically going to be a car that represents, or a class that represents a car. And for this, um, you're going to have a constructor, um, which and it, we'll talk about the data first, I guess. You have to have an integer year, a make, and a model. Both of those should be string. In the constructor, you should set the year to 1900, and you should set the um, make to Ford, and the model to Model T. Okay, I don't know if there's actually a 1900 Model T. I'm not really sure. I don't. I think uh, I think Henry Ford was after some of that, uh, but just set it as a default year 1900. Uh, the make to Ford and the model to Model T. Now again, these these in-class exercises we're doing, you do not turn in. They're not homework that you're getting graded for. The one that I uploaded under Dropbox, that is graded. Okay, so, <clears throat> but I highly recommend doing these in-class assignments as we go along, uh, just to know what you're doing. Now, again, for the in-class assignment, it's going to have three data, um, an integer year, string make, string model. The constructor will set the default year to 1900, the, the make to Ford, and the model to Model T. And then I also want you to implement a get and set for each of these. Okay, so you can pause your video now and take about 20 to 30 minutes. Alright, so if you're coming back now, we're going to actually uh, create our car class here. I'm going to do File, New, Project. I'm going to verify that I'm under Visual C++ and Win32 console application. I'm going to call it Session 2 Car. Application settings, I'm going to set to an empty project. <clears throat> Excuse me. Set to an empty project and then click Finish. And again, we have our blank solution here. I just, or well, our empty project here has a single solution which contains this project. And we're going to make a car, so like we've always done, we're going to right click header, go to add new item, and then go to header file, and we're going to call it car.h. For the source files, I know that I need one to represent the car. Make sure it's .cpp, and it's going to be car.cpp. Okay, and then, then we're going to have the driver file that will house main. It's not actually part of the class. We'll just call it main.cpp. <clears throat> As always in main, we're going to create our skeleton class. And um, then we're going to create our uh, classes over here. So car, we know that we're going to need a uh, string. That's, tech, that's technically probably not required, but I want you to get in the habit of typing using namespace standard. Okay, so, unless I was using IOStream. If I used IOStream, I would definitely need that. Okay, now, um, I want you to put class car. Again, at the semicolon at the bottom. What's next? Public and private sections. Right? The private data that I want about the car is the year the um, make and the model. Okay, so that's the data. And I said I wanted a constructor. Okay, right. simple as that. I want <clears throat> set and get for each of these data members. Now again, I could have one data member, I could have 20 of them. I could have 100 of them. But uh, we've just happened to do a lot with three, it seems. Okay, so I'm going to have the uh, setters. So it's going to be void set year. And it's going to take a, uh, actually this is an integer, so it's going to take an integer y for year. Um, set um, make to string m and set model. Okay. 
Okay. So those are the setters. The getters, the year is an integer, so when we're returning a year, it doesn't have any additional information. Then we have get make and string get model. Okay, so these are the setters and these are the getters. Okay, uh, other terminology you might hear is that setters are sometimes referred to as um, what, what we put in the in the uh, file here. There's different terminology for them, but I'll show you just so we kind of integrate this into the. Uh, so we integrate this into the lecture a little bit. Um, the getters are observers. Okay, and that's another uh, name for them. Accessor or get functions are observers. They return information about an object, but don't really modify anything. And the mutators, also known as updater or modifier or set functions, allow access, in, usually in a controlled fashion, to change the data inside of the object. Okay, so I'll just, I usually just say getters and setters, but you might prefer the accessor, observer, mutator, that terminology. Okay, so so far so good. Um, to save a little bit of time, you can actually copy these if you want. This is usually what I do when I create a class, is I copy these. Not You don't need the data, but I go over to the CPP file. I include the car.h class. I paste all of these, but I'm going to fix the formatting here. I'm going to do Shift-Tab to make sure that they all go to the left. And then I'm going to start actually filling in their bodies. So for car, we know the class's name is car, and I need the scope resolution operator. I delete the semicolon that was at the end, and um, I could do that for all of them to start out with, and then we'll come back and um, change the change the actual bodies. Okay. All right. And one more. Okay. Now, I'm going to take this portion right here that has the class name and the scope resolution operator. I'm going to paste it in front of each of these. So these are all ready to do what we want them to do. So we said by default, by default, we wanted to set the year to 1900, the make to Ford, and the model to model T. The, if the user explicitly calls set year, I want to set the internal year to whatever they pass in, which in this case is the parameter y. So year will then, the internal data member year will now possess the value that y, uh, the y parameter did. For make, we're going to set make to m here. For here, we're going to set model to m. Now the get, or um, accessors, observers, um, we're going to return the year here, return the make here, and return the model. All right? And in main, I'm just going to include car.h. I'm going to create a car here. And if I say um, h.get make the space h dot get model again I keep forgetting these unfortunately accidental here um, um, you know what actually I'm doing an L and I'm gonna put h dot get year at the beginning that makes more sense to me <clears throat> okay so if I just build it and run it now, okay, found build errors, so we're going to fix this. All right, Let's see what the problem is. Ah, oh. use a separator. Okay, build it and start without debugging. And it says. 1900 model uh, Ford Model T. 
which is what we expect because that's the default values that we set in our constructor up here, right there. Now I'm going to change the data here. I'm going to say set uh, year. We'll say 2013. H. Set make um, Jeep. Set model. Okay. Oops, this isn't a string, so that's not going to work. Okay, so don't put quotes. Don't put quotes around that. That's an integer. All right. So get it. Get ahead of myself. And now I'm going to just copy and paste this data below it, and we should get uh, different information. Right. Um, I start it, so the initial thing it prints out is the default information, 1900 Ford Model T, and you get a little bit of an upgrade here, uh, 2013 Jeep Grand Cherokee, and that's what we expect. Okay, so that's our solution. Um, <clears throat> if you have any questions during the week or anything you need me to clarify, or if you'd like me to do more examples, um, that would be fine. I will. Um, look at the discussion board and I will also check um, other things like my email if you have any uh, preferences or any uh, other things you would like covered uh, that was unclear in this chapter I recommend uh, reading through chapter 3 especially if you're not already familiar with the programming language I would say read through it very thoroughly um, whether you have the 8th or the ninth edition it doesn't it doesn't technically matter the ninth edition is pretty nice um, but uh, the <laughs> the um, eighth edition would suffice. So, if you have a different book and you're familiar with another programming language and you just have a different book on C++, it should probably be okay. So, but this is a good book and it's a good reference book as well, and it has a lot of really good examples in it. And if you want to, if I make page references, they will be to the official book for the class. So. Um, if you, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me or uh, post stuff on the uh, on the discussion board. I will grade the discussion board assignments uh, soon. If you haven't done that already, make sure you go to the discussion board and uh, you uh, make sure that you go under the uh, general discussion, uh, introduce yourself. Um, I also have uh, questions about the class here. Uh, looks like we have some new questions about the class. Um, so some people are having problems installing uh, uh, some are people are having problems installing uh, the uh, project which I think I I think I answered at the beginning. Um, some people are asking about virtual office hours how does it work? Well, for virtual office hours I do have a program called Adobe Connect if we need to uh, meet, uh, but really right now, as you'll notice, I'm here at 4.55 p.m. On, on Wednesday, so I may be in slightly later or slightly earlier, depending, uh, but my uh, if we need to set up an actual appointment where I can actually discuss it with you, we could actually talk over Adobe Connect, and I could, um, I could actually show you my screen, and we could discuss stuff over the phone. Um, we can, I will be very attentive during virtual office hours. Um, uh, the the official date for the midterm. I will get back to you on that and see other things people are asking. Uh, yeah, schedule of the in-class exam. It seems a lot of people are asking about that. So we will try to um, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. This is this is amazing. I've always I've always had problems with that. <clears throat> um the course, uh, the course itself is not uh, inaccessible um, at 11:59 p.m. So, desire to learn is accessible. This question right here, the uh, person is asking, um, you know, why would, why does OC say C cut off access to the secure areas at 11:45? Well, the secure areas, the only one that's really cut off is online services. Um, Desire to Learn is not cut off, so you will be able to access the course at any time. 
the Desire to Learn is available 24-7 except for occasional maintenance times and things like that. So that's how I'd, an that's how I'd answer that. Um, I, will, I will get the official date of the exam. Um, I will try to have maybe a couple different times uh, so it could work work for you. Per perhaps I'll have one like earlier in the morning. So maybe I'll have one early on a Wednesday and then one maybe late on a different day. Um, it'll depend. Um, but we'll work out everything so no one has to really uh, not really work too much about that. So um, if you are in a completely different state or on the other side of the state and you just absolutely cannot make it out here, we can work out something as far as a um, proctoring of the exam is concerned. All right, so again, email me or post more stuff in the discussion board. Uh, make sure you actually do the assignments. Um, there are two assignments that you have to do. One of them's posting in the discussion board, introducing yourself. Um, I would recommend please use questions about the class section for questions about the class and the introduce yourself just for that project. Um, I'll try to answer what I can. And then the homework assignment one is posted here, uh, making sure I have the file attached. Yes, I do. Okay, and under content, all of the content and including a link to this video lecture will be under here, but it's kind of like Inception. I can't actually uh, post the video lecture lecture um, link here until it's uploaded, and I'm currently recording it. It's creepy, very creepy. All right, if you um, if you need anything during the week or have any questions, just send me an email. I probably said that about 16 times now, but I'm extremely excited and getting uh, distracted by stuff in my office. So. Uh, have a great day, and we'll uh, we'll see you in a future weeks.